Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your host, Greg Thompson, tonight with this special edition of the Bill Seahawks preview. I'm joined by Lofitz Tupu. Lofa, how are we doing? Good, my man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I, a huge fan for, for anybody who isn't familiar. You're talking about three-time Pro Bowl linebacker, spending you know six years with the Seahawks and, and a ton of time you know around the NFL growing up in that culture with your father. And uh, really excited to be able to talk about uh, talk about the game today. Yeah, man. I mean, both of our teams are looking pretty strong right now. Battle of our number ones, right? Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I think fans are going to be in for a fun game this weekend. Uh, the weather looks perfect. It got a little nasty last weekend. It looks like we're going to be like 60 and sunny and in perfect conditions for everything. Uh, neither defense has quite been up to snuff yet, but both offenses have been flying high. So we'll get into some of the details. But before we uh, dive into it, just anything you want to share with, with some of the fans, what you have going on or, or where they can find any of your work? Uh, yeah, I uh, recently started a Believe in Seahawks podcast with the Believe Network, uh, B-L-E-A-V. And then um, I got my own uh, startup, Zone In CBD. You see the shirt? Uh, you see a lot of athletes, you know, advocating on behalf of CBD because uh, of all the benefits, you know, uh, mind and body. And, and the, man, I started my journey about four years ago. And it's after all the surgeries and concussions, it's really put me 10 surgeries, 15 concussions, oh. and I'm here to tell you that I've never felt better at any point in my life. So um, that's the power of the plant, and uh, I'm going to sing its praises every chance I get. You can find out more about us at zoneincbd.com, and uh, yeah, man, we're changing lives. Awesome. That's beautiful, man. And it, I'm so happy for you. You hear so many different things. And I get we'll start with the Bills offense against the Seahawks defense. Um, one of the pieces there, Bills fans are a little bit nervous. Uh, Mitch Morse uh, ending up with his sixth concussion and has had some of the challenges there. He's been kind of that 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 pivot of the offensive line. And I, I think that sometimes some of the challenges the Seahawks have had on defense, um, you know, obviously so many moving parts and changes in the secondary, that front seven still got some talent in it. And you're, you know, Bob, obviously Bobby Wagner and KJ Wright and some of the names that people know, um, but they're a lot tougher up front than I think maybe people just assume because of the struggles with the past defense or honestly being in the lead in so much garbage time uh, against them. Some of the stats that have come up there, what are some areas that either concern you or things that Bills fans might need to be wary of and how they're going to try to attack the Seahawks defense? Um, yeah, I think, you know, we're really, we have the best linebacker unit in, you know, all of football. I really believe it top to bottom, including the depth. Um, they've had strong performances. KJ Wright, uh, he was on a streak of three or four turnovers in, in two games, three games. Uh, and then Bobby just unleashed, you know, one of the best performances we've seen in a while, 11 tackles, two sacks, and they're really they're starting to get that pass rush going because we've had so many injuries up front. We're we're bringing in snacks, uh, Harrison, a Pro Bowl player. Uh, we just acquired uh, Dunlop through trade, yep. so so help is on the way in terms of shoring up that that front uh, that front seven. But we're going to be bringing pressure, you know, with Bobby and, and Jamal, who are two of the best pass rushers from the second level that I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it's funny. I obviously very familiar with Jamal Adams uh, coming from the Jets, and you know, always at that point when you're getting ready to play a team like that, he was such a singular force. When obviously wasn't surrounded with a ton of other talent, being able to put him in a defense like this, where you still have, you know, about you know, Bobby Wagner so good in just what he can do on both sides of it. Some guys are great in coverage. Some are good in run defense. You know, he's just, he's good at everything that he does. And so instinctual for covering things, having guys like that who can give him the flexibility that, you know, I don't know that Jamal Adams is the best coverage safety in the NFL, but he is a weapon coming off of not knowing where he's coming from, when he's going to time blitzes, when he's coming up into run fits, even run blitzes when he blows uh, plays up in the backfield. I, I'm a little bit nervous about, you know, if he right now it looks like he's back as I'm practicing limited, it looks like it's likely we're going to see him this weekend. I, I heard he's full go uh, this afternoon, so okay. um, yeah, I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see a whole lot of him. He's been on, you know, on injured, uh, not reserved, but over there. We've been, you know, holding him back, including the bye week. Thought we were going to get him back for at least uh, Arizona, but you know, with the position the Seahawks are in, um, with the the record, they didn't have to rush him back, and I'm glad they didn't because. Um, the other guys are getting these reps that, that are needed. You know, Ryan Neal and, and some of the young guys that filled in, they did a phenomenal job. And now you add a piece like Jamal back into the mix, someone you have to account for when he's in the box. 
Um, he'll, he'll chase, he can time blitzes. He can chase down the run, a sweep on the backside. As I know you guys got some speedy backs over there in, uh, you know, Singletary and, uh, and Moss. So uh, I look forward to watching that matchup of strength versus strength, our run defense and Buffalo's run offense. Yeah. And it's funny you say that in the, I, I think some people would like to see a little more of the explosive speed in the in the Bills backfield but the short term the short area quickness the contact balance the vision that Moss and and Singletary have can be really really helpful sometimes sometimes it's frustrating that they're not elite athletes to get around the corner but they're so quick and so good at making guys miss in that short space that you know they're constantly creating yards after contact because it's tough to get a clean hit on either of them because they're so good at just shifting their body weight moving just a little bit and I'm sure you can appreciate the challenge of playing guys like that that you think you got squared up and then all of a sudden you kind of graze off and you can't figure out how they keep going yeah played a lot of tough backs in my day and I mean I guess if if I had to think of one that kind of fits that mold, um, the Giants, uh, Bradshaw, you know. Oh, my yeah. Bradshaw, that's great. Great call. Smaller guy, tough, man. Oh, not the best speed, but fast enough, quick enough, very good lateral, you know, burst uh, or, you know, burst of speed, acceleration, and, um, you know, change of pace to the big guy, uh, Jacobs, that they had. But Yeah, yeah, so but, talk about Jack Hammer. But Bradshaw could do everything. He could catch in the backfield. He could blitz pick up. He could do it all. Um, that was, and that's who I kind of like in um, the, the combo that you guys got going on right now. Yeah. Well, and last week was the first time we really saw either of them get going in, in any substantial sense. And they, they still, I think, had about 14 carries each. And yeah. getting that up and running, it was by far the best game we've seen from Zach Moss. Um, but I think that Bills fans are excited. I keep looking back at how. We can kind of flip over to why I think that's going to matter playing against the Seahawks offense. I keep looking back to how they handled the Chiefs game. And in the Chiefs game, they knew, you know, if we try to go, they watch what the Ravens did. The Ravens were aggressive. They sent blitzes. They sent man coverage and said, hey, we're going to try to get to you before you can beat us. And Tyreek Hill destroyed them. And they, they ended up getting blown out. Bills fans were a little frustrated seeing these constant checks into five and six man boxes because they were just begging them to run the ball and to check out of it. And they kept Hill and Mahomes to their lesser games of the year. And it was ugly and infuriating, but they had us, you know, they had it where Justin Zimmer caused a fumble down by six at the, the chiefs 28 yard line with whatever four minutes to go. And it ended up that uh, Edwards Hilaire's knee was just barely down, but if they don't that infuriating, frustrating, Hey, why are we letting up 180 yards rushing? They were just kind of trying to keep them at bay and not let them, you know, get up and running. I'm curious, you know, having both DK and Tyler Lockett are just different animals. And I, I, I tell myself you can bracket both of them. I don't, I don't know if you can, but I, I keep trying to figure out, can they, is it send three spy Russ with one and drops, drops. And I, teams try to approach this crazy passing attack. Everybody's tried everything. And I mean, honestly, the only time, that Russ hasn't been successful. He had three bad plays. And that's all. I, yeah, we, we just I, talked about the Cardinals. It, it was two ugly picks. The rest of the season's been phenomenal. It's it's been unreal, right? And um, because you know, I've seen teams throw all out pressure at him and him just take his time back up and methodically just throw it to, you know, the guy that looks the most open in, in zero coverage. Uh, when they have an extra defender rushing them, then we can block. And uh it doesn't phase them, you know, and so uh, when that, it's like, what do you do? Do you double those guys outside? Because if you do, now now you got David Moore. Yeah, and- yeah. More. No, nobody knows Moore's name, but I mean, you're talking still multiple touchdowns. And we brought this up in our preview show before. Yes, there's 14 touchdowns to Metcalf and Lockett, but he's got 12 touchdowns to other receivers. It's yeah, and David Moore's got some of the most impressive catches. You know, as as great as Lockett and Metcalf have been. The, the like two or three touchdowns that Moore has, it's just unbelievable. Like one, he tiptoed, stayed in bounds. Uh, another one laid out, caught it. It's, I mean, those are hard catches to make. He's just not getting the opportunities. And of course, people are going to continue to try to figure out okay, you take away Lockett, Metcalf's going to go. He's going to go off. You take away Metcalf, Lockett's going to go off. You take away both. We got David Moore. We got, I like DJ Dallas as, as the running back right Look now. Look good last week. Since our backs are a little banged up, um, great job by the rookie. But um, but the tight ends, we have three 
tight ends that have started NFL games and played well. Olsen, potentially a Hall of Famer. And uh, and then you got Disley, who every year for his first two or three years, he started off on fire. And then he unfortunately had an injury. And um, and don't forget about Jacob Hollister. I'm sure you yeah. guys are with him with New England, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and it, it's going to be – that's what we kept going through was, okay, if – and trying to just manage this Seattle – offense you know number one a scoring offense number one in dvoa people assume that because they're so good passing that the run game isn't any good but they're 12th in rushing yards and eighth in rushing dvoa that I mean, they're still fine it's it's just picking your poison it doesn't seem quite as painful as watching dk run past people down the sideline i it, um so i i haven't checked like you said today's practice report um i know that it's been iffy for Carlos Hyde. It's not expected for Carson, but both of them were out there. Are either of them getting back into where they could play this week? I think Hyde and possibly potentially Homer could could come in and, and you know spell um, DJ from from all the reps. But um, you know I'm excited and encouraged by what I saw by DJ. Guy averaged six yards a carry, you know, in college. You know, that's no slouch right there. And uh, and he does everything well, uh, just like we talked about, you know, the, the great running backs. They can do everything well, and he, he does. I, I was – I don't know that I, I hadn't done a ton of homework on him. I, I watched a little bit in the draft process. I, I was impressed with seeing him out of the backfield last week. I don't know that I expected him to be as natural and as comfortable as he was coming out there. He looked really good catching the ball. He does. He does it all. And that's, um, you know, why they were really excited about him is because um, it's very rare for rookies to be adept at everything, including blitz pickup. And he and he is. He knows his assignment. And that's where they really you get scared. Right. To put put some, put a young guy in there, especially when you got a guy like Russ back there. Uh, you don't want to miss the, the, the protection. And uh, so that got him through camp that's I got him a lot of praise and then they started putting him in uh, on different packages and letting him run some routes and they're like oh wow we got something here so um both those kids Homer and uh Dallas from Miami uh they're, they're a good little backfield so it Talking about that blitz pickup and the protection for Russ, I know a lot of fans are familiar with Drain Brown. They know the name there. I can't lie, most of the rest of the offensive line are not names that everybody's familiar with, but it's been a huge in step forward this year in, you know, everybody remembers the highlights of just Russ running around like crazy over the years and constantly having to kind of save the line from themselves and having to bail them out. So many more of these plays now are him sitting there bouncing on his toes in the backfield and being able to have more time. Where has that line developed in? And is that something that's still coming together? I know we've seen kind of Ayapati you know, back and forth and some different pieces from a health standpoint. Where's that line compared to where they expected it to be? Because I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen. Yeah, I think they're pleasantly surprised, right? Because that's always been that's been a lingering issue for the last few years. They said, hey, if, if we could just shore up that line and get a couple more guys in there. And then there's been injuries. And so um, you potty in and out of the lineup, but Simmons has done a great job. You know, Pochek moving from guard to center to start the season, that's no easy task. And he's done it admirably. Um, and then the the young pup, the, the rook, uh, Damon Lewis, he's played big time ball at LSU. I loved him at the senior bowl. I, I was down there watching him. He tore okay. dudes up at the senior bowl. I mean, yeah, he's for a rookie to come in, um, you know, of course, quarterbacks, probably the hardest to play in terms of what you have to know. But in terms of the physical commitment it takes and um, yeah, the physicality of the game and the exhaustion, offense and defensive line, that is just grown men. And to jump in there at 22 years old, uh, it's impressive to see what he's done. But they um, they seem to have a great you know chemistry uh, amongst the group. And um, you know it's exciting to see Russell have a little more time. And that's why we're seeing Russ Cook. No, I, I'm not looking forward to it on Sunday, but as just an NFL fan, I think that so many people are just a fan of the way Russ approaches the game and going through there. And I know a lot of the narrative things have come up of, you know, people getting attention of, oh, how has he never even received a, an MVP vote and all those different things? It looks crazy in hindsight to see it, but I'm really, you know, again, besides Sunday, um, I'm really happy to see how much positive attention people have come around to see just how special he is that, you know, I, I think everybody has an argument for Mahomes. I think he's a special talent. I think Russell Wilson is playing the best football of anybody in the NFL this year. And it's just incredible. Like you said, it was literally two plays in that Cardinals game that he let them back in there. Beyond that, he's had a nearly flawless season. Just, you know, maybe tell fans a little bit about what you get to appreciate 
you know, snap in and snap out, seeing them all the time versus on the East Coast and in the AFC East, we're much more on the highlight end of things, seeing the big plays. What's it really like getting to see a guy like that operating at such a ridiculously elite level? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, you go back even – it's hard to even say he played a bad game in Arizona because he put up 472 yards <laughs> off 35 points. So it's like, you know, uh, I, I I would put my stat on me as a defender, you know, because it's tough. It was a hard fought game, but um, you got to love what you see. And I think what you said it best right there, snap in and snap out. The guys never misses a snap. I'm knock on wood. He, I've seen him play through a partially torn pack. I've seen him play through a, a grade two MCL sprain. Um, and not miss any practice. He wants all those practice reps. It's a guy that anybody, any organization wants to be their guy. Um, and so uh, the leadership, I guarantee you, any, you know, whenever he throws, if he throws a pick, he goes right to the defense. It goes, daps up Bobby and the boys. He's like, hey, you get the ball back. I'll put it in the end zone, man. My bad. I'll get it back. And it's, you know, that's what you want to hear from your leader, right? So, um, you know, he's, he's the first to admit it you know, when he, he needs to play better, which isn't often, but that's what you like seeing because when he, he took that loss, even though it was not on him, but he took that Arizona loss, he came out and said, that's on me. Uh, I can't make those plays, uh, those three bad plays, and uh, and it won't happen again. And, I mean, that's what you love about him. Yeah, and, and it, it's incredible. You talk about, you know, Bills fans obviously got rightfully excited about Josh Allen's start to the year and the opening four games, and he's been – okay in the game since then i've actually been reassured in that his floor i think is a little bit better than where maybe people thought they were but seeing that even when he was at his peak i kept telling people i'm like hey i get the mvp excitement do you guys see what russell wilson is doing and just to let fans know people who aren't tracking this seven games in he's on pace for 4,900 yards and 60 passing touchdowns. It's unbelievable. 26 touchdowns in seven games is bananas. He, I mean, last week he, he played a near flawless game. Um, you know, a couple of the incompletions were throwaways where he, you know, smartly got rid of the ball, uh, but he still had 270 yards of, uh, 270 yards passing and four touchdowns, no, no interceptions. And <laughs> that's not even getting consideration for a player of the week anymore for him. That's like, Hey, we need five or six touchdowns. Russell. Yeah, just a whole hum game. Yeah, that's no, no big deal. <laughs> it's unbelievable. C coming over and seeing, you know, in, in doing any of the work you've seen, or obviously probably more similar to my experience with Russ, seeing more of the highlights for Josh and some of the lowlights, those things come up. What have you seen so far of maybe his step forward this year and starting to put a little more consistency to it? Um, refining some of those mechanics to be able to make some of the better throws, uh, some of the things that Stephon Diggs has helped unlock for the offense. What do you think the the Seahawks are going to be looking at as far as picking their poison with this Bills offense? Uh, first and foremost, you have to stop the run, and uh, you know it's a tremendous task with with what not just uh, Singletary and Moss, but you add Allen to the mix because yeah. he can create, you know, extend plays and then take off. He's not afraid to six five two forty. That's a, that's a big fast dude uh, running the ball. And, uh, and I think what I've seen him do and make the biggest leap is his decision making. Um, you know, he's not forcing things like he did, you know, maybe a year ago, leading to, you know, multi interception games or and, um, you know, if he, he doesn't have what he likes, he'll pull it down and run. And that's that's the whole thing is, you know, just keep moving the chains um, as, as a quarterback. Stefan Diggs is adding an element to that game that, you know, you, you he's a player you have to be aware of at all times. And, um, you know, I think that's a weapon that, you know, uh, Allen's been missing maybe in, in like years past. So, um, you know, I encourage you with where he's going. He, he's got all the talent, you know, height, weight, arm, everything. And, uh, you know, it'll be exciting to see where he uh, where he goes in the future. Yeah. And I think that Bills fans are excited about it. And I think that this has at least reassured them that it's worth being excited about and that, you know, we don't know where it's going to end up and what kind of things um, he'll end up achieving, but that it's at least worth buying into that, that we have something here to be able to continue to develop and go forward. And I think that's, you know, especially in a place like Buffalo, that's exciting to have where we haven't had that literally since Kelly to, to be able to be in that spot. We've had band-aids with guys late in their career. You had a minute from Flutie, you had a minute from Bledsoe. We had that, that brief glimpse with Fitzpatrick uh, before, before seeing him, you know, head back the other direction so having somebody that 
you know, we finally feel like we can buy into early and that, oh, this might actually work out. It's exciting to finally have that feeling and experience. Yeah, I, I bet. And um, and that's the, the, the early years, especially with, you know, how cap friendly their contracts are. That's where you really you want to make those strides and, and get it going. And like that's probably why I, I still can't believe Russ didn't have a single MVP vote. But but, it, you know, his first couple of years. You had beast mode. You had the number one defense, you know, every year running. So it's like I understand they probably – he didn't get the credit he deserved. But – and now I don't think he's getting enough credit for what he's been doing for the last several years because as the defense says, as we've lost guys, you know, um, the the Legion of Boom's gone. Uh, Cliff Averill, uh, Michael Bennett, Brandon Meebane. Quentin Jefferson. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. I love (laughs) you. Oh, I love the Q. I mean, I, he was one of the most exciting picks of that draft for me because when I would turn on the film, I was like, my God, this guy's everywhere. And uh, him and then uh, Alex Collins, the running back that we got in the later rounds. And you look at – they both turned out to be just studs, man. And we got Alex Collins back because of our, our uh, running back uh, situation right now. And um, and he's a tough, hard runner. I mean, you saw what he did in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, Q. Oh man, I'm still still upset that that one got away, man. No, he, he's been nice. It's taken a minute to figure out. It's it's been unfortunate having Star Latule opt out. The Bills didn't have secondary options at one tech, so mm-hmm. they've ended up having a bunch of guys like Ed Oliver, Quentin Jefferson, even bigger guys like Vernon Butler, Harrison Phillips. There's still more of that penetrating three tech, all kind of masquerading as a one tech, and. I mean, he was, he's done his darndest to be able to to play yeah. the role, but that's just yeah. not what he's meant to do. Who's this new guy, the new Kyle Williams I keep seeing? Uh, Justin Zimmer. He did punch, hey, but you keep punching out fumbles against the Patriots, and people build a statue of you out front. I mean, yeah, I, I, he reminds me of Kyle, and, you know, that's high praise because I know oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, Kyle Williams, my God, that guy was incredible. And, um, you know, I believe, you know, should have been to more Pro Bowls and gotten more credit for – for everything he's done, um, utmost respect for that guy. No, certainly, I probably one of the more hidden players just because of how terrible some of those Bills teams were over that stretch and seeing a guy that never really had a chance to do that. And now, yeah, obviously, that's not remotely fair. They did that to Harrison Phillips when Harrison Phillips had a, a decent run and now Justin Zimmer. So we're not going to put that uh, on them. But Zimmer has looked decent and, and, you know, obviously starting to earn more reps, getting in there, and, you know, nothing's going to ingratiate yourself to getting more reps than making a critical play in a moment like that where the defense needed somebody to step up and you know seeing that momentum of oh my gosh we're going to let them come back here and be able to make a play coming up there and knocking that out to, you know can't pick a better opportunity to earn reps he's done that a couple times now right yeah yes yes yeah and I mean, like, did you say he did it against the Chiefs or? So where? yeah, yeah. It, honestly, he could have two game-winning fumbles if if Edward Hilaire's knee isn't down, and yeah. they would have got the ball to twenty-eight going in, down six, and they had been moving the ball on them. You could be talking about two game-winning fumbles that, that he could have created from a D tackle. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't ever happen, man. Like yeah. that's you know that's some Kyle Williams stuff. <laughs> Yeah, fans are going to love to hear, hear you saying it. Um, it. It's really exciting to talk to you here, man. We really appreciate the time. As we kind of start to wrap things up here, what you know, we talked about, I, I expect this to be high scoring. I expect there to be a fair amount of points back and forth. Um, I'm... I, I can't rightfully pick against Russell Wilson and, and what he's been doing so far this game. I think the Seahawks are rightfully favored in this game. I think that they're still a little bit more consistent with it, but we explained a couple different paths of where we can see the Bills pulling out a victory. It's probably going to take an opportunistic play on defense, somebody creating a fumble, somebody creating a special teams turnover, getting an extra possession because possessions are going to be critical here. Yet You can't kick field goals. You have to get touchdowns. Being able to do that, what kind of game are you expecting to see on Sunday? Um, I, I'm going to look to see the Bills uh, try to establish that run, you know, and really test us because they are good at running the ball. And, um, and you know, I understand, you know, the, the where we're at with our secondary, but um, we started to really rush the passer better from multiple, you know, avenues. And then I, I believe Dunlap's in this week. I'm not sure about snacks. So you put, you know, Carlos Dunlap in there. Um, guy's got over 80 sacks from – 
the DN D tackle position, 6'6, 280. Um, you're always excited to add that that to the to the mix. Well, talk um, about what we talked about with Kyle Williams, a guy that most people don't know the name because he's been lab, you know, just languishing in Cincinnati this entire time. He's better than fans realize that that's a talented player. I mean, you, when you get up towards the century mark uh, around a hundred sacks, they start to talk hall of fame. And you know, <laughs> I mean, that's uh that's the production and pace that this guy's had. So I'm excited to see what he adds, you know, cause he's going from a team that had one win to a team that has one loss. And I don't know if there's any more excitement as a football player, knowing you have a shot at the title, um, you know, you, you're joining a contender. And I mean, I, I feel like it's going to breathe some, some life into him. And, uh, and I, I anxious to see what he does, but um, I expect a hard fought game. Both teams are tough. Both teams are first place. And uh, it's uh, like you said, it's pick your poison with the, the Hawks offense. And, um, and we'll see how they, they try to come out and attack the Hawks defense. Yeah, I appreciate it. This has been a ton of fun to be able to talk through, and um, I think fans are in for a really exciting game. Uh, one more time, uh, let the people know where they could find your work and what you have going on with uh, Zone and CBD. Yeah, so um, on the Believe Believe Network, uh, B-L-E-A-V, Believe Sports Podcast, started a Believe in Seahawks podcast with Brett Davern, and uh, it's been fun. Just fun like this, getting to talk football with, yeah. with you know everybody. Uh, it's my first true love. My second true love is my new startup, Zone in CBD. Um, it's uh, I've been on this journey for about four years, and it's kind of just uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually, even emotionally, just brought me to um, a higher purpose and a higher being in life, and, and feeling my best in all facets of life. So, uh, on on your you know well-being journey, join us, uh, zoneincbd.com. And um, yeah, man, I'm uh, blessed to be doing this. And uh, I can't wait to see this game this week. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, guys, everybody checking out here, uh, you've been listening to Greg Thompson and Lofa Tatupo. Uh, this is uh, Cover One Buffalo, and we are out. Uh, one last thing. Go ahead. Thurman Thomas is the greatest football player of all time. <laughs> I needed to get, we needed to have that in there earlier. People would have been uh, a lot more excited I, for anybody who missed it. Uh, we, Lofa and I had a great conversation beforehand about, you know, all the shine that, you know, Marsha Falk and LaDainian Tomlinson and Christian McCaffrey rightfully get is, as great players. But the guy who started that all purpose scrimmage yards game was Thurman Thomas. And that Lofa was a huge fan of that uh, as a child growing up and uh, started as a Bills fan as, uh, as he first started to fall in love with football. Right on, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Have a great night. We'll talk soon. All right, brother. Take care.